Hi guys, I thought I would show you a really easy way to back cut files using the offset tool in the Silhouette Studio software. Now this technique will work with any cut files, but I am going to use one of the cut files that I designed for the stamp spot. They are available right now and I will leave the link for them down below. And the one I'm going to use today is actually free, so make sure you head over there and check it out and grab this one for yourself. I am just going to, I've opened up my Silhouette Studio software and I'm just going to drag in the JPEG for this cut file. Now these cut files um, that I've designed for the stamp spot are all specifically designed for the pocket page notebook or um, a traveler's notebook. So you don't have to worry about resizing anything. You can just drag this straight in, um, trace it, cut it and pop it straight into the pocket of your pocket page notebook. So I've got my JPEG and I'm going to use the trace tool. Just select trace area and drag that all the way over the JPEG image. Now you'll notice that some parts um, haven't been picked up and the easiest way to get that is just to uncheck high pass filter. And you can see that's now turned to all yellow so that's what it's going to trace when you click trace. Now you can select the JPEG and delete that because we don't need this anymore. And this is the cut file that we're going to work with. Now, what I want to show you today is how to make a cut file sandwich, which is going to be really only useful in a pocket page notebook because um, the pocket page obviously is clear. You want to be able to see both sides. So if I just cut one of these and then back it with pattern paper and pop it in my pocket, when you flip it over, you're going to see all the ugliness on the other side. So I'm just going to show you how to um, make it look pretty on both sides. So I'm going to need to cut two of these cut files. So I just right click that and duplicate it. And this one here, so one of them anyway, I need to flip it um, horizontally so that it's a backwards image. Um, so effectively you need to cut two of these cut files and then in between them we're going to put the pattern paper. So I can go ahead and cut both of these now. I'm going to cut them both from white um, and then I will come back and show you how to very easily cut all the little pieces to fill in all these cut files. Okay, so now we've got both pieces for our sandwich cut out, you can just carefully go ahead and lift the cut file off the backing page. And actually I find it easier to pull the outside off first. And the only trick with this one here is to remember to take the little O inside of the O as well. And the rest of that can get pulled off and put in the bin. And then we can go ahead and back the pieces for inside here. So you can see what I mean about it being a sandwich. That we're going to stick these two together with pattern paper on the inside so that when you flip it, it will be pretty on both sides. So now that we've got our outlines, the two copies of the outlines cut, we can go ahead and cut the pieces to fill in the inside. So I'm going to select this piece here. I only need the one now and right click and release compound path. So that just splits it apart into all the little pieces and you can go ahead and delete the outline pieces. So they're the bits that you don't need. All I'm going to need for this particular cut file are the letters that spell out this moment. So just delete, select all the other ones and delete them. And now we can go ahead and cut all the little pattern paper pieces um, to fill in the cut files. Um, the, uh, the trick of this is to make sure that you separate them a little bit. So I'm just going to take all the rows of letters here and just spread them apart. It doesn't matter that they're not in the same place um, because we're going to glue them back together when they're paper. So just spread this all out and then you can do this all in one go but I'll just show you one at a time so you get the idea. 
just select one of your pieces and then go to the offset tool. And you want to choose offset. And you can see it creates an outline um, just a little bit outside of where your cut file is. If you cut one of these files exactly as it is um, and put it into the outline piece, it would fall straight through or you would need to stick it onto something um, to make it fit because it's exactly the same size as the piece that's missing from the outline. So what we're doing with this offset tool is just creating something that's a little bit larger so that we've got something to glue onto the cut file. Now, um, I'll just delete. I'll just delete this outline and show you here. So when you choose offset, you can choose how big or small you make it. And it's really, um, it's personal how big it is depending on the cut file. You don't want to make these too big because if all of these letters were this wide, they would overlap each other and it starts to look a little bit untidy. So just play around with it. For this particular cut file, um, it looks better if it's about 0.75. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and delete the inside file and then repeat this process for all of these other letters. Now the only trick here is that when you've got a letter that's got a cutout um, piece in the middle, an O or an A for instance, you're going to need to offset both pieces. So for the outside piece, you do the exact same thing that we did. And you can delete that. But then the inside piece, we need to do an internal offset. And it's still exactly the same thing, except it's moving um, the offset to the inside rather than the outside. And that's all there is to it. And then you can go ahead and place these letters onto your cutting mat. So I just place them so I can see here, I'm gonna to need to cut out pieces of pattern paper that are two by three inches. And, or this one's only <laughs> one inch by three. And then I can place these pattern papers onto my cutting mat and cut all of these in one go. This O here, I just selected both pieces and control G to group them so that I can move them, put it into place, and then go ahead and cut them. So here you can see what I mean about cutting it all in one go, cutting the little three by two inch pieces of paper and sticking them onto the mat corresponding with where you've put the letters um, on your Silhouette Studio file. And then if I peel these off, you can see I've cut all of the letters for the cut file all in one go. Now obviously if you've got a more complicated cut file than this, um, you may not be able to do it all in one go but generally you should be able to fit all of them on your mat all together. So now I've got all the inside pieces of my sandwich and I've got both, um, both sheets for my sandwich. So it's going to go like this. So here's the easiest way. Um, I think if you cut these with double-sided, um, sorry, of like with sticky card, this would be super easy to do too, but I am just going to use a little bit of multi-matte medium um, to stick the letters on. So this is the front of my cut file and I'm just going to flip it over and work like this. And I'm going to, just because it's easiest for me, work my way up this way here. So I'm starting with the T and I'm going to apply a little bit of multi matte medium, just a tiny, tiny little bit all the way around the edge and then flip your letter and stick that onto your cut file. Couldn't be easier. So I will carry on filling up this whole thing and then show you how to make the sandwich.
So that is all of my pieces filled in, except that you can see I'm missing the O here, which was why it was important to make sure you pull that off the sheet as well. And then just go ahead and stick that. And this time you're sticking it on top of the backing piece that you cut. And so that is your cut file all finished. If you're going to use this on a layout or any, or just stuck onto a page, you finish at this point, sorted. But if you want to put this into the pocket page of your pocket page notebook, you just need one more step to tidy up the back of this, which is to glue the reverse cut file onto the back. So all I'm going to do is the exact same thing. I'm going to go around all of this with my glue and stick it on. And because these are exact opposites, it's super easy to line it up. This is why I prefer a wet glue for this sort of thing, because you've got a little bit of wiggle room. And then the same thing, just to add in the little piece of O. And now your cut file sandwich is finished and you can very easily slip it into the pocket of your pocket page notebook. I probably would wait for the glue to dry a little bit first, but there you go. One cut file sandwich for your pocket page notebook. Don't forget to check out these cut files from the stamp spot. I will leave the link in the description box down below. Otherwise, have fun cutting.